What is going on guys, Victor here. Now before we move on with our normal fishing video, I gotta give a huge shout out to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's video. So if you guys don't know what Simply Safe is, it is a home security system. Brooke and I actually just got it delivered to our door and literally installed it in less than an hour. When we first opened the box to install the Simply Safe and I saw all the different boxes of everything, I was like, this is not gonna be easy to do. But let me tell you, it was so, so simple to do. It's literally double-sided sticky tape. This is an entryway sensor and um, you put one there, one there, just like over there. That's literally just sticky tape. And when you open the door, it's gonna notify your home base, which is this guy right here. This is the home base. And honestly, it almost looks like a piece of furniture. This is connected to all the sensors in the house. We got one in the garage, front door, the side door. So if Brooke and I were home, I would just click home. Simply save on. Home. If somebody tries to break in in the middle of the night, it notifies over here. Unless we put in our pin, which you set yourself. Alarm off. So if I didn't put my pin in and one of the motion sensors went off, the monitoring center will call the police if it's alerted to anything. About a year ago, Brooke and I purchased our first home and home security is something we should have done a long time ago. We have a ton of fishing gear, a ton of camera gear, you know, we're self-employed. Our entire livelihood depends on our tools. So now when Brooke and I go on a fishing trip, go to the Keys, go wherever, we have a greater peace of mind leaving our stuff at home. And if you want to learn more, you guys can go to simplysafe.com slash Landshark. I'm also going to have the URL on the screen here. Now, let's go catch some fish. And check out the size of this absolute unit of a kingfish. So I got invited on this Pretty cool trip. We got a bunch of people. We got so many people filming. Yeah. This is my buddy Colby Blackwell right here. What's up guys? And he's got his own YouTube channel, right? I do, yep. So I'm gonna have it linked below. Colby's down here with his brother, a bunch of friends. They're from Alabama, good Southern boys. And they actually caught this, Colby caught this kingfish. Yeah. Biggest one I've literally ever seen in my entire life with um, Eric and Matt of Deep Blue Fishing Charters. Yep. So my buddies just started an offshore charter business. You guys have seen me go out with them kayak fishing before. So Colby fished with them yesterday and a fish this big is definitely best eaten as dip. Once these kingfish get so big that the meat gets kind of mushy. So we're gonna stake it up. I'm gonna give it to my buddy Frankie. He's gonna make fish dip. But you guys are gonna see us offshore with Colby and a bunch of other people. So stay tuned. All right, everybody, it's the next morning. Got my man, Eric from Deep Blue Fishing Charters. What's happening? You guys may recognize him from the kayak videos we did. We got the whole crew. Colby we got Blackwell, David, David, Colby, Grant, and Carter. We got everyone on the boat. And then Matt is actually over there, and that's Bailey, Jen, and uh, Slade, and the rest of the crew, so we got a little friendly competition. That's And a... we have me, Victor forgot me. Oh, <laughs> man. Everybody knows you're behind the camera. Okay. All right, so this is what we got going on. So we're gonna do two baits today. We're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna put a goggle eye on a flat line. We're gonna put it out about 50 yards behind the boat. And then I'm gonna put another goggle eye on a down bait. We'll use a 10 ounce sinker and a rubber band. And we'll drop him down about 50, 60 feet. One through the nose. And then one through the back. Sometimes if you guys get um, um, foul hooked a lot, you can put one through the side of the belly, which I know Victor likes to do a lot of times here. That way it doesn't get foul hooked, but I'm pretty good at not foul hooking the baits. Um, unlike Madden. Grant, can you bump it in gear for me? Uh, we're gonna cut the motors off and do some jigging for tuna. Um, tuna bite's been awesome this year, as you guys know, so it has. It's been like one of the best years for tuna in South Florida. Dolphin, not so much, but tuna has been really good. And we're fishing in Boynton today, I'm excited. Everyone from down south where we fish always wants to go north. All the Boynton guys wanna go to Jupiter. All the Pompano guys wanna go to Boynton Del Rey, so we're fishing Boynton today. Because this is where the fish are at, man. It is. You're closer to the Gulf Matter Stream. A lot more Kobe up here, which I'm rooting yeah. for. No, I thought so. All right, you can cut it out. Neutral. All right, I just got smacked in about 280 feet of water with the vertical jig. Most likely culprit is a blackfin tuna or bonita. That might be a blackfin. Oh, that's a blackfin. Look yeah. at that vibration. Blackfins really like to go down deep, whereas bonita, bonita will usually shoot oh. straight up. Oh, it might have turned into a bonita. We'll see change of identity. Oh. It's a tuna. It's a blackfin. That's awesome. We got dinner, boys. Woo! Look at that. That's a good one. Good eating one right there. This is on a Mustad vertical jig. And for you, those of you guys who don't know, Mustad's a, a sponsor of ours. And they just came out with a, a huge line of vertical jigs. Slow pitch jigs, v vertical jigs, all different uh, colors and stuff. And 
You guys can actually save 20% off all Mustad fishing products and tough line products if you guys use my code Landshark in the description box below. And guess what? They catch tuna. So when we're out deep, black fins like that like 120 to 300 foot range is where you usually find them. And it's always nice to have a, a array of live baits. So we got the two gogs, but it's always good to have a jigging rod because a lot of times those tunas, you see those big eyeballs, they will push down so deep. They'll be all the way on the bottom because they don't like sunlight. They're ambush predators. They're, they're low light conditions fish. They eat really good in the morning and in the evening, but with the jig, you get your bait or lure way down there. Eric, you catch plenty of big ones on the jig during the middle of the day, don't you? All, all, all day long. I'll have some pictures on the screen here to put the proof in the pudding, but Eric does really well on the tunas. So if you guys ever are interested in a charter, good friend of mine, they just started the boat charter and you catch a tuna. And listen to Victor, a lot of people don't want a vertical jig, but it produces. It's it a does. lot of work, but it produces. It's not lazy man's fishing, it's a workout. Good little black thing to add to the box. We should be able to good. flip that one right in. Right. Woo! Yeah, he is. We got it, Tuna. Nice job. Good job. Yeah. Cool little football. Is your boat net? Yes. They're literally right here underneath. Get the one down, Bart. David, you didn't get a couple right here. You're going to drop your egg. Make your egg. Big as soon one. as you get their head out of the water, they're done. Kicking their ass. Yeah, he, wants to, he wants to jump back down and get another. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. But honestly, if it wasn't for the jigs, we'd be uh, empty handed today, wouldn't we? Wow. Is that crazy? Sometimes we got these juicy live sardines and gogs, and sometimes they want the metal, the mustad jig. This is feeling more kingy than Bonita. If you jig people. long enough, you're going to get tight. What does Bonita eat? Bonita, Bonita ask. They shoot up to the top, real violent tail shakes. This is feeling more like a king. We're marking a ton of stuff. Hopefully I get in them in before the sharks. They have a shark bait down on the other side. We've just been seeing free swimming sharks all day long. I see remoras, that means there's a shark around. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. Shark on me. Young shark, got it. Called it. Called it. I saw remoras. It's, you see the remoras. As soon as you feel feel your line get super tight and just slow and steady, shark grabbed a hold of them, what? took them. I just had a king sky on this little sardine in the back. Hasn't come back yet. We've been getting cut off by so many kings on the jig. They don't seem they're being real leader shy. All the jigs have a floral or mono leader. What was that? Yeah, the fish are real leader shy today. I think that's why they're eating the jigs. Bonita's there. everywhere. Oh, 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 there we go. Come on. Got him? Yeah. There you go. Single there we hook. Go. Come on, baby. Be a big fish. Be a big fish. Hey, hasn't stopped yet, Eric. Thank you. He hasn't stopped yet. There we go. Isn't it amazing? This is the first fish we've hooked on a live bait all day. Amazing. It went straight down. This is not a bonita. We're in the mood for eating metal today. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, we're doing funny. Yep, yep. Nice king thing? Yeah. Hell yeah. You just gotta be careful yeah. to get them shark. Decent, so? decent fish. Yeah, I hope he doesn't get shark. Same. Well, we had a shark bait down and could barely hook one, so I think we'll be okay. <laughs> what was that? getting chased. Yeah, my line got real funny. Real funny. I'm good on this side now. I think it's a big king here. Good, 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 good. Good call with cutting that off then. I think now, oh no, don't tell me you got eaten. Yeah. I'm like almost sure I know the instant it got sharked. My line got real funny, it got real heavy, and then now this. When you don't feel those tail beats anymore, and you just feel dead weight and it's doing this, it's more than likely a shark. I already put the gaff away, that shows how confident I am. <laughs> I mean, this is, Coming up. this is like dead though. It's just dead weight now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to see what it is, you know? That's what it is at the end of the day. It, if, if it is the tax man, I just want to say hello. He's starting to scope back towards the engines. 
The hook just pulled? The hook just pulled. Or something broke. Man, we were that close too, huh? We were that close too. Good. Just broke it. Not a shark for sure. Sharks are definitely endangered. That's all I gotta say. Sharky, huh? I am being sarcastic when I say that. Sharks are certainly not endangered, at least not in South Florida. Maybe in other parts of the world. Sharks are the biggest problem for offshore fishermen right now. It is ridiculous how many people's fish are getting eaten by sharks. It's unprecedented. So we've been hooking a bunch of little tunas, but this one just took a screaming run real close to the bottom. It's like I said, those tunas, they have those big eyeballs. They want to stay down deep during the middle of the day. Look at that. Mustad vertical jigs doing work today. Eric, what's the, what's the biggest tuna you guys have gotten on a jig? Uh, close to 28 this year. 28 pounds? Yeah. Damn, that's big. Those, uh, the big tuna are pretty smart. They really key in on live bait. So getting one, you know, over 15 pounds, it's a good catch on a jig. If you guys actually go on our Instagram account, deep blue underscore fishing charters, uh, I will say every tuna on there except for two are caught on jigs so far this year. The other two were live bait. Yeah, they slay, I'm telling you guys. 100%. Oh. Is that a AJ. Yeah. 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 I'll take that. There I'll take go. that. You got that? Looks like you hooked it. Oh, something coming for it? No. Yeah, it looks like it's a deer. It's a big one. Oh! Oh, I thought it was an African pompon. That's a freaking huge Almaco jack. Look at that thing. You want it? Yeah. Yeah, take it. Nice job, Good man. Gaff. Good job, bro. Good gaff. Bring it in. That's a stud on the code jack. That's a big one. Woo! Nice. Jig right in the mouth. It had us fooled. I thought it was a big tuna. I kind of thought very similar. We all thought it was a tuna. And I'm telling you guys, we have hooked one fish on live bait today. Everything else has been on jigs. Tunas, bonitas, hooked plenty of kings. Now this all the code jack for the dinner table, which we literally ate yesterday. Slade said it was his favorite fish he's ever ate. Grant, I'm pretty sure you said yeah, Almaco yeah. Jack was your favorite fish, right? Yeah. Yeah, baby. Don't put that in the box taking pictures. Small. Hey, you guys got to check out Brooke's video. I'm going to have it linked below on her channel as well. She's behind the camera. If you guys don't know, that's my fiance right there. She just caught a stud blackfin tuna. This is a little football blackfin tuna. There you go. That's number five. Another one? Yeah. yeah. Flip it in. You know, they're not big. Blackfin tuna is blackfin tuna. It tastes the same whether it's 30 pounds or 5 pounds. This one's lit up. Hold them up. Yeah, let's hold them up for you guys. And another fish on the jig. On the jig. Like I said, you know, you don't need to come out here with live bait. Sometimes you come out here, you jig from like two to 400 feet. You don't know what you're going to catch. Almaco jacks, wahoo, tuna. All sorts of things. All in a little mustad vertical jig. These boys have been jigging up, up at the front of the boat all day. Paying off finally. Oh, tail rat. Tail, tail rat, rat. Oh, black fin. There, oh, there you go. Oh, no, it's not, it's oh. You turn around for me. Flip it in, flip it in. There you go, yeah. let's go. There you go. Right. All right. So these two kings were caught on Matt's boat with Jen and Bailey and uh, JC and Matt, and I guarantee you that one fish I lost earlier today was probably a king in this size range, but a shark took it. But that's the name of the game. So between the two boats, we got a good amount of fish. Matt and the crew also caught some dolphin, Brookie's big black fin, the Almaco Jack. So we're gonna get a little group pick going here, and um, we're gonna cook the Almaco Jack up, and I'll see you guys in the kitchen. Okay, so we got everybody around the table, we're about to whip up a really good meal. This is the uh, Almaco Jack that the boys caught yesterday. A lot of people don't like it, but I think those people are crazy. So what we're gonna do is kind of like a pan fried blackened style. And to give our fish a little bit of texture, what I'm gonna do is season them with a little bit of flour, only on one side. So we're only gonna give it some texture on one side, okay? Some Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning, very similar to blackened seasoning, a lot of paprika, cayenne, garlic powder, salt, all that stuff. So, a heavy dose of Cajun seasoning. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're not gonna do flour on the other side. We just, like I said, I wanna give those fish some texture, some flavor. Now that's it, that's literally all we're gonna do. We're gonna pan fry them in some peanut oil and then finish them off with a little scallion butter. 
Okay, so we got the holy trinity. Onions, celery, bell pepper, and then one jalapeno minced. So, and this is two big onions, a ton of peppers, a bunch of stuff. We got a little mock shoe going. I'm gonna add some peanut oil, stainless steel pan, and we're gonna shallow pan fry the uh, Almaco Jack. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt for insurance because I don't know about you, I hate when fish isn't salty enough. So, flour side down first because that's the side we're gonna cook it on the longest. And that's how you're going to get that crispy exterior, is the side you cook it on the longest. That's why we're going with the flour. Okay, so this is what you're looking for on your fish. We're going to do a little flip right here. Right there, you see that exterior, that crust? If I run my spatch along there, it's nice and crispy. And that's what that flour does, it gives you a little exterior. And that's why I like to cook it two thirds of the way on one side and then one third on the other side because it really doesn't matter. If your fish is cooked in the middle, it's cooked in the middle. But it's all about developing those flavors, right? And you get that texture. This is a little homemade vinaigrette. It's olive oil. It's about equal parts olive oil, red wine vinegar, oregano, salt, black pepper, garlic powder, orange juice, cilantro, and brown sugar. So we're going to mix it up before we put it into our little cucumber, tomato, red onion salad. Just drizzle that in there. And then we're going to finish it off with feta. But I don't know about you, I don't like really soggy feta, so we're going to do that at the very end. We're going to add about half a head of garlic to this. We're just going to cook it for 30 seconds just until we can start smelling it. Some sweet kernel corn. Traditionally, makchu is made with real corn, well, just real corn, but not out of canned, and then you extract all that creamy goodness out of the corn, but we're just using canned corn today. Now we got some Israeli couscous. Don't have a pot at the house big enough to um, cook this, so I'm going to cook it straight in there. Try to match the liquid amount to this and hopefully not make it too soggy. And then we got four cups of chicken stock and I'd rather have hard couscous at first and then, um, I don't even know why I'm measuring this, I know there's four cups in here. I'd rather have hard couscous and add liquid to make it more tender than vice versa. Okay, so since we didn't get that creamy flavor from the corn on the husk, we're gonna add a little bit of heavy cream for a little bit of artificial creaminess. And that couscous actually came out really good cooked with all those veggies. Just add the right amount of liquid, add, add less at first, and then more if you need to. So now, in here, we're going to make a little scallion butter. You add that butter in, you scrape off all those little brown bits and all that Cajun seasoning, and you get all that flavor in there with some scallion. You scoop that on top of your fish, and then you got your creamy Israeli couscous makshu which we added our cream at the very end. You excited, Colby? Yes, very. So what you think? Your first time having Almaco Jack? The first time pretty much having most of this stuff. It's, everything is really, really good. That's what I like to hear. You try the fish yet? Uh, not yet, but it looks really good. Let's I like how crispy first, it looks. First bite. Oh, you left the chip in there for me. You never seen this Very, very good. Yeah? Oh yeah. There we go. You never would? No, me and B group or something. Very, very good. So have you ever had amberjack before? I have not. It's the first time ever. We, we all know Bailey's uh, familiar with uh, YouTube. You guys have probably seen her in Blue Gabe's videos. What do you think? Honestly, it's really, really good. Gabe may have a little bit of competition. Um, I give it 13 out of 10. It's Whoa. good. Whoa. It's good. Whoa. There we they go. break the scale. Bailey, you can come in at our house anytime. Okay, that's a deal. <laughs> Mr. Slade, the man that yes, made sir. it all happen. I'm happy to look at that. for you. Well, I mean, we're glad you're here. This is unbelievable. So. Too good to be true. <laughs> Too good to be true. Okay, so we got a piece of AJ, well, Almaco Jack, and then we have Victor's scallion butter that he made up. Pour that on top, then the mock chew, like that. And I'm gonna go back for the salad. This is kind of something that Victor and I do all the time, this kind of salad. Very good. This is like probably the best fish I've ever had. Yeah. And you know that a lot of people don't like amberjack. They think that it's a trash fish, which is the craziest part. Oh, it's, it's white. Yeah, it's look great meat. Look, look how white guys. and flaky it is. 
And it's got such a good texture and flavor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tartar approves? Delicious. There we go. Mr. Slade. This is fantastic. Look at this. Did you see the flakes in the, the white meat? I mean, it literally just pulls apart. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. The fish is absolutely amazing. You know, a lot of times people say that the only thing you can do with Amber Jack is smoke it, which is totally not it. I mean, this is an Almaco, so people kind of put Almacos above big Amber Jacks, but it is so, so good. So I'm happy to actually cook for a bunch of different people. You guys always see us cooking for Brooke's family, my family. You guys are probably used to everyone saying it's so good, but um, all fish is good. It, the, the whole thing is don't overcook it. And every fish has a different, a guy, right? Tuna is really good for sushi. Amberjack is really good this way. You don't treat certain fish like another fish. And that's what I think it comes down to. And I think that's kind of why Amberjacks get, Amberjacks get a bad rap, but I'm very happy to have all these hungry people eating my food. I'm very happy about that. Oh, what do you think, David? There will be none left. Ooh, cool. <laughs> just delicious. David said he's going back for seconds, and I probably am too, honestly. Yeah. Fantastic. So, if you guys don't know, like I said earlier, my buddy Colby right here, subscribe to his channel. He's the guy who caught the Almaco and that giant kingfish we saw earlier. Yep. So check him out. He's putting a lot of good stuff on YouTube, Thank as well you. as his dad. They're literally traveling like all around the world, so that he has some epic stuff coming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll catch you guys in that next video. I want to thank Simply Safe once again for sponsoring today's video. Sponsors do a lot for the channel, and we always love to work with the sponsors that want to work with us. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in that next video.